Thank you, Senator Casey. Senator Mullen. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm just going to make an open comment here. I kind of feel like uh, hell's freezing over because um, Chairman Sanders and I actually agree on something, and it's that something needs to be done with PBMs. So I do appreciate you having this hearing and the order that we're having it, Chairman. Uh, it's, it's actually a compliment coming from my side, if you can believe that. Uh, I, I want to I I point out uh, this chart behind me. This is the integration chart uh, where it starts showing um, how PBMs have integrated themselves and they've become their own customer, which is kind of like the fox guarding the hen house. And, uh, and it's difficult when you start thinking about that Congress was actually wanted to help stand up the PBMs to help bring down cost. You've seen costs do nothing but skyrocket uh, on prescription drugs. At the same time, you've seen that PBMs have become literally a billion dollar industry. In the last five years alone, you've seen uh, prescription drugs increase by 16%. At the same time, you've seen the net income of PBMs and their integrated companies grow substantially. Start thinking why. I mean, if the billion dollars industry has grown up, it's not because of taxpayer dollars. It's because it's got to be going to the drug cost. If it's going to the drug cost, who's ultimately paying that price? Well, it's the consumer. Obviously, the money has got to be passed on to someplace. It's just retail politics and it's retail consumers. The price has to be made up because every one of you guys are in business for profit. And I think that's great. That's called America. We are able to do that. But I want to kind of bring down on some things that may be need to be clarified. Um, for instance, when uh, Senator Marshall was asking the question of why is it that some drugs aren't able to make it to the market? And uh, I, I, I believe it was said that they are if they're the lowest cost. But Mr. Hudson, when that comment was being made, you were shaking your head saying, because what Senator Marshall was asking is, what prohibits drugs from coming to the market, especially competitive drugs? Because everybody says competitiveness is what brings down the price. And I agree with that. But I don't think you actually agreed with, is it Joyner? With Mr. Joyner's answer, when he said it's based on formula, whichever is the cheapest for the consumer. And as I was noticing, just reading your body language, he was going like this. Can you explain uh, more from your perspective, what prohibits drugs from coming to the market? Yeah, I think I think what I was perhaps reflecting was a, a, a lack of unknown, because you know, as I said, in 2018 we launched a lower price uh, analog. You know, in the insulin market last year, a lower price direct equivalent made in the same factory, mm. and you know you would expect if price was the answer, and perhaps we talk at slightly different terms, you know, I, the use of cost versus price, I'm not quite sure what it means on both sides, but I'm, I'm reflecting on the fact that if the intent of the chair and everybody here is to lower the price of medicines, and we do, and it doesn't change for patients, I don't know so you brought is. you brought a you brought a generic to the market and uh, that was significantly cheaper than, you know, than the other one, but it, it didn't reflect the patient's well, it, didn't, it just didn't get listed in anywhere. If price is really the motivator, it would That's have been interesting. And, and who prevented that from being listed? I'm, I'm, you know, I was not part of that conversation. But I mean, but the PBMs are the ones that help bring that to market, right? Well, my assumption is Your assumption? that the PBM... I think you're being very politically point. polite here, and I appreciate that. Uh, but I think we can all read between the lines on this one. Mr. Ricks, uh, when you're talking about rebate checks, because the comments were made earlier because the question was asked about rebates and our PBM officials over here, they were saying that uh, the PBMs go to their customers, which I'm curious of who the customers are, because I think the public would assume that it goes to the public, to the individuals, to the person buying the drugs. But I know I have six kids that seem to always be in the emergency room that always seems to be getting prescription drugs of something. Um, and I've never got a rebate check. So who's the customers? Where do you send your rebate checks to? Yeah, thanks for the question. We send them to the PBMs, as mentioned. But where, where does the check actually get mailed to? Does it get mailed to some place uh, inside well, the United States? Well, increasingly, yeah, we were instructed to send them to the GPO. Where is the GPO at? I think it was asked earlier, right. uh, the, the various organizations you have up there. I think but most of your checks, what country are they mailed to? 
Well, outside the United States, or there are some that go outside the United States. And a tune of how many? How much would you give me a guess? Uh, our total rebates in the United States for commercial mm -hmm. uh, that was paid to the major three last year was eight billion dollars. Okay, it's not a third, a third, a third, but it's roughly that. And a big chunk of that goes outside the United several States. Several billion, several billion goes outside the United States. But yet these are customers for inside the United States. Yes, right? these correct. are rebates for for customers. U.S. access to U.S. formularies. Yes, but yet the rebate checks aren't actually staying inside the United States. The biggest chunk of them. Correct, or a big chunk. That's yes. interesting. That's interesting too. I wonder why that is. Um, and so, when we start talking about customers for the PBMs, who are your customers that you're referring to? That the rebates go to because you say the PBMs only keep 90, 97, 98, or are you guys send out 97, 98 percent of your rebates, right? And the uh, customers is the insurance companies, right? So, Senator, the our customers, so Express Scripts has over 2,500 customers. But Many of them are employers, small, middle market employers, some large employers, labor unions are our are, are clients, so public self, sector so entities, or self and health plans. Self, and, and health plans, right? Yes, self, but also self insured, your, yes. But also your insurance companies, right? And the whole reason is to supposedly bring down premiums. But yet, if you look at this top line here where it says insure, the PBMs own the insurance companies that their re, that their rebates are going to. It's self-integrated, so you're rebating yourself. That that is just wow, great business model. And we wonder why prices are high to our consumers. And this is why the chairman and I actually agree on something. This isn't working for America. It's working for you all. Great. And you guys are killing it. But if we're talking about bringing down prices, what have you all done to bring down prices? That was the whole reason why you guys were created, to bring down prices. And we've seen nothing but them increase. It's not going to the pharmaceutical companies that are making it. It's not going to the pharmacists unless you own them. But if you own them, we really don't care if it makes it because upstream or downstream, depending on where they are in the integration chart, that's where you're getting your money back. And there, and you wonder why you're here? Are you actually serving your purpose? Heck no, you're not. And as I said before, it's like the fox guard in the hen house. You've literally forced us to make the changes. And in my private company, if I have an entity that's not being effective for what their intended purpose is, I would shut them down. And that's what I think the solution here is. That I yield back.